So this room we're in is this sort of indoor flight arena we've built to study how dragonflies forage and catch prey. Basically, what we've tried to do is craft an environment that is sufficiently complex that dragonflies will actually sort of be happy living in here. They'll think it's a, you know, the real world and they'll forage and catch things the way they do outside, but simple enough that we can actually measure what they're doing uh, with very high reproducibility without being subjected to the sort of variability of temperature and, and lighting and air and climate outside. These obviously are beautiful insects and if you watch them for a few minutes it's sort of hypnotic to see the, the incredible agility with which they, they behave. But like fruit flies and other insects, their brain has many fewer neurons than a mammal, so there's fewer things to measure. On the other hand, they're very large for an insect, and so it's possible to load them up with sensors and actually measure them while they're behaving. And that's very difficult to do with a small insect. So why are we trying to record from neurons in these dragonflies while they're flying? We'd like to look at the individual nerve cells, these are the brain cells or neurons as we call them, and think about how they steer the animals. So a simple example would be playing tennis, where you're simultaneously doing two things. You're looking at something moving through the world, say a ball, for example, and you're predicting where it's going, and you're trying to steer your body to intercept the ball at some future location. You have these really small components for this backpack, this tiny little device, and you have to hold these things. You have to manipulate these little tiny circuit boards and antenna and circuitry or what have you. And you're actually pushing the limits of engineering into a degree, and actually the materials themselves. Try to think of a backpacking manufacturer that's making backpacks for mountain climbers. A climber is going up a hill, he's climbing Mount Everest, and he or she does not want to feel the weight of this backpack. And the ergonomics have to be just right. It's the same thing with these animals. With these backpack systems, we're actually splitting it down to the milligrams. They have to behave in a way that you can actually get real scientific results. If the payload is too heavy or it's, or it's awkward for the animal, you obviously aren't going to get the recordings or the data that you're looking for. You know, what are the applications of this? I mean, if you want to repair an injured brain, um, the best way to do that is to understand how it actually works, right? And ultimately, I think research like this that really explains what these circuits do is going to be the future of how you want to use that technology. So how would you control the neurons to actually do it? Let them do something in a goal-directed manner and move their own legs. And so the best way to think about, I think, these types of projects is just fundamental research into what the brain is doing to solve complex behavioral problems.